Good morning. Everyone is okay? All right. Just look at the person next to you. Tell them it's so good to have you in church today. Amen. Hallelujah. And tell them I love you and there's nothing you can do about that. <laughs> All right. I just I love you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our God is faithful. Amen. I said our God is faithful. Hallelujah. The Bible says faithful is he who have promised who also will do it. Amen. Good. So you may be seated. I've got quite a few things to share with us today and I just want to get going with that. We just had a wonderful time just connecting with our king. Amen. How many of you connected with him in love this morning? Hallelujah. How many of you had a, a just had a love time with him? Hallelujah. He impregnated some of you in that love connection. He deposited in some of you stuff that you will come into as time unfolds. No, I'm not kidding. I said he impregnated some of you. All right. He made deposits in our lives that will manifest itself in time to come. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. He canceled stuff on our behalf. Some of, hallelujah. He's just done some amazing things. We underestimate sometimes the, the power of worship. God all by himself in the midst of our worship does things. He heals, he delivers, he sets people free. If you connect with him, he will connect with you. That's what the Bible says. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Amen. Hallelujah. So I know he connected with us in amazing ways this morning. And we are thankful for that. And we really praise him for that. Hallelujah. Today, I um, want to just talk to us a little bit. And um, hopefully we'll get going with that. How many of you know what our theme is? What's our theme? Nice. That's our theme up there. All right. And our focus for the quarter is faith to possess. All right. That's our focus uh, for the quarter. And our theme is what it is. You are on. I am think I'm doing everything that's right. I'm not sure why it's not connecting just yet. Hopefully, we will do that shortly. In William Shakespeare's um, play, Romeo and Juliet, now I'm not going to deal any love story, but in Romeo and Juliet, Juliet mused, what's in a name, she asked. What's in a name? In Shakespeare's personal reflection on the subject, he said, He who steals my purse steals trash. But he that flinches from me my good name robs me of that which enriches him not and makes me poor indeed. The irony of this is a replacement name that can define you in a different light and change you for all of your life. Hope you get that. He says, he who steals my name or takes my name or messes my name robs me of that which does not enrich him. Doesn't make the person who messes you better. It makes you in some ways power, power, power. And I'm saying, one of the, you know, when we think of that, the irony of that is you sometimes are tagged with a replacement name that defines you differently in light of their own perception. And that different name that they tag you with can change your life forever. Can alter your life. Names 
both in the physical and virtual world, will outlast each and every one of us. I repeat that. Soon they'll be on the screen. But names, both in the physical sense and virtual world, will outlast each and every one of us. Father, today, thank you for the privilege to share with your people. You've prepared my heart, and I thank you that the hearts also prepared. I thank you for that awesome privilege. I pray that your word will reach us. I, dis I defeat distractions and things that will come to rob the word. I destroy them. I speak against them. And I pray, God, that we all would zero in on what you will say to us today. And at the end, be better. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. So everything I said is up there. We understand names as follows. I'm going to change the screen, so let's roll on come back. A couple things I want to establish. We, establish. we understand names as follow. We understand that they are functional names. They state the function and purpose of a person, a thing, or a product. We understand that. Yeah, it was what we call descriptive names. They say something about the purpose of a person. Okay. Descriptive names. They say something about the purpose of a person. They say something about a thing or a product. We understand that. It feels good. <laughs> Thanks for saving me. Connotative names. They suggest an aspect of what the person, thing, or product does. Thank you. I feel an anointing. Imagery or made up names. They say little or nothing about a person, thing, or product. A summary of all of this. My name is Michael Mitchell. My family name is Jajak. However, I am called a host of other names. And to some I respond. Because be it what it is, it speaks to my function. It speaks to something about my life. So I've accepted some of the names that I'm called outside of Michael, outside of Mitchell. Some of you call me Pastor Jay. You know? Why are you laughing? My wife simply calls me J, and I call her B, and that B has a lot in it. It's a loaded B, even if it's just, for me, just the letter B. But that's what I call her. So when I think of names, they're a description. They describe me in some ways, and they connect me. And I am in some ways what I'm called. Some ways I'm what I'm called. And you are in some ways what you are called. Now I have been in my life, I've been called some other names. Because something I did, maybe from my weakness, or as a failure, and in my shortcomings, People have called me names in this life, in these times. I have failed. I have weakness and I've displayed weakness. And when that has happened, people have tagged me with a name. But I must say, I have refused to be defined by these names. Because that is not who I am. Today, some of you are struggling 
with tags. They have robbed your name and they have tagged you with a name that have defined you or you are allowing to define you. And you are allowing to make you live a certain way. I refuse that. Some I don't even remember. And there was a time when past I gave excuses when people said things to me. And one day the Holy Spirit checked me. And said you don't have to. In fact there were times I was thinking about it. And I'm just putting together some thoughts. There are times when. Evidence. Are stacked against you. Even if you are innocent. And with that evidence that is stacked against you. In your innocent. You are still tagged with a name. There are people who are called names. Which they have a hard time accepting. Because on some of them they are called names because of a medical condition. So people might refer to you or to someone else as a sickler, for example. They might refer to you as asthmatic, as this, as diabetic. They may tag some names on you. So they'll say, here's an, an as asthmatic person. They tag you with some stuff. Shakespeare was, Shakespeare was right to ask, to ask the question, what's in a name? And I will say to you, names matters. Every time we hear a name, we make a number of assumptions. We make a number of assumptions about that person or about that thing. But there is also imagery. We create an image. We see something. And some of you, you are called stuff. And you see yourself as what people call you. A name identifies you. It identifies a thing, etc. However, it does not so much, it does so much more. It creates a public face. It brings connection. Your name. Your name creates a public face. And if you are defined by another name that is not your name, it also creates a public face. Um, face. I remember one time I was moving with someone and they saw a young man and they said he is a volley. And the public face for him was a thief, a volley. Every time you see him, you gotta be you gotta be careful. If you see him around your area, it raises suspicion. That's a tag. He was not born with that name. But we have robbed him of his name and we have defined him in a way. And some of you might be tagged with a name that has created some imagery. And for you it's hard to deal with. As we continue to speak this month or this quarter on faith to possess, understand what is happening. You are receiving tools to live a life of faith. I've listened to pastor for the past couple of weeks share with us. And I want you to understand that you don't come to church to get a word to entertain you. I, I, you know, I have been preaching for over 30 years. And I really have grown past entertaining people. Because I've realized that it is truth that sets you free. So, I may not dance around. And I'm not, I have no objection. I've just never been a shouting, screaming, jumping, sweating kind of preacher. I've just never been that. And I have, I'm not saying that to say anything about preachers who do that. Please get me. Please understand the context in which I'm saying that. Because people, I mean, people come to all kinds of conclusions when you say things. But I'm just saying in my years as I share and as I preach and as I, I expound God's word, 
I'm, I'm learning that we need to tool people. When you leave here today and you go on your week and you go on your days, you face things. You deal with things. You fight. We need to tool you. And faith to possess is tooling you. It's equipping you. You need to be better and you are better. I plan one day to preach from the back. Because some of you are at the back and you are not connecting with the word. You're on your gadgets. You're doing stuff. You, at some point in your life, will regret some stuff. It's like people go to school and they make two back. And then they come out dunce. And they see some of us making progress. I mean, I've had people tell me all kinds of stuff. I mean, like, for example, when I was in college, I was doing very well. My grades were great, and I was doing well. I remember meeting this American guy in the corridor, and he said to me, man, you're just so full of pride. And I'm like, you know, I went back to my room, looked at myself in the mirror, and asked God, Father, because, you know, do I, do I really have pride? I mean, is, there, I'm strugg- is, it, is it a problem with me? I was doing well at school, doing very well. And one day, you know, I was driving, you know, and one day I had this very nice vehicle. I, I always loved pickup. I had this nice pickup that my friend who moved on to his um, estate for the Christmas holiday, he left it with me. Very posh vehicle. And I was driving that around campus, driving that around Dallas and Raleigh, you know. And then one day, the same guy said to me, um, I would like to go to so-and-so a place, which was a good distance from campus. Can you take me there? And um, so I was like, yes, this guy with pride is going to take you there. <laughs> so I decided to drive him there. And um, we were driving, and I confronted him with that. And really, his problem wasn't me. His problem was he. He couldn't pay. My, my bills were paid at school. You know, I had no debt at school. I was doing very good and all of that. And in the conversation, he's having a problem with himself. He's an American struggling in this country to pay his school bill. And his problem with me. He's an American in his country struggling with his grades. He has a problem with me. He think I'm proud because I, my bills are paid and I'm doing well. And sometimes you tag people, not because of them, because of you. Because of where you are. Because of the struggle. Because of what you face. And you tag them, you brand them, you call them stuff. Well, when you check it, it's not them, it's you. You got to check yourself. So as we share with you, we share with you to build you. You receive faith as a grain like a mustard seed. But your faith grows. My man, our faith grows. You can be weak in faith or you could be strong in faith. You can have little faith or you can have great faith. Your faith grows. As I speak to us this morning, I want us to understand that it is not really a word to your flesh. It's a word to your spirit. We're living in times that's tough. We're living in a world that's confused. We're living in a world with all kinds of secular mindsets and all kinds of secular, all kinds of things happening. We're living in a confused world, a searching world. We live in a world right at this point we are faced with a pandemic and they said to us, look to a vaccine. And now the vaccine is here and they said, well, we're not sure about the vaccine. We're living in that kind of world. We're living in a world that's creating confusion. Those of us who choose to operate a life and live a life of faith will operate and will have peace in this world because God will bring to us a peace that passes all understanding. So when people are messed up, when people are, you know, shaken, we will be at peace because the peace of God will come to us. So today I want to share with you on the power of a name in your season. The power of a name in your season. 
seasons. And the transition between seasons are very delicate times. How it's handled can shape you, can break you, can do a lot of things to you. I want to take us to Genesis chapter 2 from verse 19 to 23. That's my text. And from that, I will just extract some things, four things from the text. And I'll go to Philippians and wrap this up with the fifth point. Genesis 2 verse 19. It says, Out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam called each living creature, that was its name. So Adam gave names to all cattle, to the birds of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not formed a helper comparable to him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into a woman. And he brought her to the man. And Adam said, Wow, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. I said I want to share with us five things for from the text. Number one, man was given the power to name within his domain. He was given the power to name within his domain. Domain. Everybody say domain. domain. Say I have a domain. domain. Whether you like it or not, there's a, there's, there's a domain. You, there's, there's an area you rule. You have a domain. You are not as weak as you tell yourself. You have a domain. You are a person of dominion. You have dominion. And you can exercise dominion. Amen. So man was given the power to name within his domain. It says, out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. We'll come back to that later. And whatever Adam called each living creature, we'll come back to that, that was its name. Look at verse 20. So Adam gave names, Adam gave names to all cattle, to birds, to the birds of the air, and to every beast of the field. And then it says, but to Adam, for Adam there was not found a helper comparable to him. That's, uh, we will deal with that in a, a different time. Say, I want you to say, touch yourself, say, I have power to name. I'm going to say that like, you know, I have power to name. All right. So this verse says, and whatever Adam called it says in verse 19, And whatever Adam called each living creature, that was its name. Whatever Adam what? Called. So here came an animal with little tacks like her, like my sister Cheryl, dressed black, you know, spots on it. And um, he said, wow, I'll call you. Well, it maybe had the stripes down, black and white stripes, not tags. But that would, that would be the leopard. With, with the, you know, the leopard, we still remember to that. But he saw an animal coming with, with stripes and stuff like that. And he says, well, zebra. Zebra. And God said, zebra it is. He saw an animal with a big kind of thing coming. And he says, well, man, what would I name you? So he said, I will name you Hippopotamus. <laughs> and that was its name. What was its name? This verse reference to animals. 
Before then, they were known in relation to their species and their area or the realm of domain in the ecosystem. So birds of the air, collective birds of the air, all right, so fish of the sea, first of all, realm of operation was the water. Beasts of the field, the realm of operation was dry land. And then birds of the air, the realm of operation for this was the air atmosphere. So Adam named them because he had power uh, to name these things because they were within his domain. God said to him at the beginning, you shall have dominion over these things. So within his domain, he named things. I hope you're looking at it. So Adam, what he did? He gave names to all cattle, to the birds of the air, and to every beast of the field. And it says there was not one for Adam. It goes on to say that. It tells us in verse 23, and Adam said, this is not bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of me. He gave her a name. She was called, she shall be called woman. She shall forever in that name, because I will share with you that names create a certain level of permanence. I will share that with you shortly. But she shall forever be connected to me, to man. For she is a man with a womb, with reproductive capacity as I make deposits into her. She shall be called woman. That's why those of us with a woman must be careful what we deposit in the woman. Because she shall, she'll be connected with you, but she has reproductive capacity, you know, uh, you know, as we make deposits in her. Now, some men think the deposits they make into a woman is just the deposit of sperm to bring a child. But you need to understand that you make more than this kind of deposits into a woman. And even to get to the place where you make the deposit for a child, you've got to make some other deposits because, brothers and brothers, and if you don't make the deposit, she may not even be prepared for you to make that deposit. Because some of you think you can say what you want to her, treat her how you want, act how you want, don't do nothing, don't even be lazy like Lazy Joe and all kind of stuff and then feel you want to make deposit. Well, there's a song, No Money, No Love. You can't, you need to make... <laughs> deposits. She shall be called woman. She was within his domain. But let me just tell you something about this one within his domain. This one within his domain was not for him to dominate. That was, that was the only being within his domain that he didn't have, the, you know, he wasn't given license to dominate, to walk on, to step on. Because you would read, it says that she was comparable, compatible, a helpmate, someone suitable for him. And she's so suitable for him that you give her, they say to us, you give a woman a sperm, she give you a child. You give her raw material stuff, she may give you a, a you know, good meal. You give her a, a house, she gives you a home. You know, you, you, well, one person says you put, well, I won't say that word here, but you should get that back, you know what I mean? <laughs> she has the ability. So if you give her nonsense, she's going to give you a whole pack of nonsense. <laughs> a 
woman has reproductive capacity. And a lot of her reproductive capacity is based on our deposits as men. All right? Good. So let's roll. The original making of a woman was for the total completion of the man. The original making of a woman was for the total completion of a man. She shall be called woman, one who completes the man. So he gave names to everything within his domain. Let's move on. Number two, the power to name given to man became an established principle. Can we say that? The power to name given to man became an established principle. And I'll share with you some things. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh, and we go on. In the work of creation before that time, we read, everything we read, it's God saying. And God said, let there be, and there was. God spoke, and things came into existence. After God created man, I want you to get this truth. But after God created man, before man fell, he stopped saying and left the declaration to man. So that man in and under the authority of God was the one saying and naming things. That's a radical truth. I hope you understand it. Because God gave man that authority. It became a principle. I will help you understand that as we move along. It became a principle. Uh, it, it is so that man cannot function effectively on earth without a name or names. Everything has a name. What's that? What's that? All right. What's that? All right. What's that? All right. What's that? Everything you, everything you have now has a name. Man cannot function effectively on earth without a name or names. Think about it. Just can't. Everything is given a name or has a name. And you from these names, you and I from these names, will either give your situation a name or it will be given a name for you. So you go, you know, whether you give it a name, but it will be given a name for you. They made a disease or they, well, they made a disease, well, let's say they made a disease. And they gave it a name. And they, 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 when all of them making, made a vaccine and they gave it a name. So, understand this. Understand this. Everything is given a name or has a name. And you and, f you and I from these names will either get one for our situation. So, your situation is given a name. It's given a name. It may be given a name by you. Or someone will give it a name for you. And when they give it a name for you, you go and you tell us, I have that. And you say the name they gave you. All of a sudden, you have that. Because someone gave it a name and they say, that's what you have. So you're walking around with it. And you say, I have that. Go somewhere. Go somewhere, anywhere, and ask. I want that. I want that. What? They will ask you, what is that? Right? You can't go anywhere and say, I want that. I was listening to Amelia a few weeks ago, and Amelia was saying, she wanted to know um, who is, who is um, um, they, you know, they say, Who's they? They say. Yodi. They say. Who, who, who's they? So you can't go somewhere and ask for something and say, I want that. 
Yes, you will be asked, what is that? Even when you go to the doctor, you ask after you have seen the doctor, doctor, what is the name of the thing you say I have? And some of you, you so like the name he gave you, you walk around with it just like a badge of honor. I have that. I, oh, I have that. I went to the doctor and he said, I have that. So I have that. Uh, I have that, Sarah Lee. You go to Sarah Lee Pharmacy, the doctor say, I have that. You, you see, there's a, there's a, hey, I have that. Let's move on. The power to name enables the believer to give permanence to that which he or she names. Remember, you have, you have, you have, you have the power to name within your domain. Naming is a principle. All right? The power to name enables the believer to give permanence to that which he or she names. Adam named Zebra way back over there. And we still say zebra today. Am I right? It's permanence. One of the things, one of the first things God established with man after he gave him dominion was his agreement with what man named all the animals. It says, out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field. The Lord God formed them. Every beast of the field and every bird of the air. And, and look at the line. It says, and he brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam called each living creature, that was its name. That was its name permanently. God did not change it. God did not discuss it with Adam. God did not say, boy, where in the world did you get that name? Bring that back. Change that. Name represents something. I think there was a story of Alexander the Great who had a, a soldier come before him and trembling. And when he, he asked, soldier, what's your name? The soldier said, my name is Alexander, sir. He said to him, you better change your name or change your character. You cannot be standing in front of me. My name is Alexander the Great and you have a name like mine and you are that fearful. You either change your name or change your character. Don't, don't behave that way. Your name. Your name. If you with the power of your mouth, if you with the power of your mouth, Give yourself a name. God may not change it. If you. It's a principle. It's established. If you with your mouth. Because we are snared by the words of our mouth. We are taken by the words of our mouth. The enemy cannot work with, 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 against you if you don't say things. So if you, with your mouth, give yourself a name, God may not change it. Let me fast track something. How many of you have, how many of you have failed in your life? I lift up my hand. You failed. Failed like Toby. How many of you have fallen in your life as a Christian? Good. How many of you have, you know, disappointed God in your life? I lifted my hands. Maybe, uh, you know, good. All right. Nice. How many of you in your failure have been called a name other than what you are by people? Lift up your hand. When you fail. All right? All right. How many of you turned to God and what, did, what is the name? Did he change the name he called you? God, even in your weakness, says you're an overcomer. There's a 
permanence about some stuff that God declares. He has never, when you fail, say, look at you good for nothing rascal. I made you that and look at how you behave. He, every time you check his word out, he refers to you as overcomer, as modern conqueror, as triumphant, as a winner, as beloved, as saint, as child of God. He will never change his word and the way he named you regardless of how you behave or how you live. Now, that is not to create excuse for us to live bad, but I'm saying to us, God, there's a permanence about your name in him. So don't let people define you with another name. He has given you a name. Hallelujah. We were plenty caught style when we were growing up, right? Angie, remember those days? They call us, you Baptist people. Or you call us plenty court style and God's permission, people. Yeah. They call us plenty court style. And we and we and we and we, we provoke them because we we wrote, we had shirts and we, we you know one, one I remember one, one of our right now shirt was I'm a priest. And we you know he called me father when he saw me like that this morning. Father Jaja. And we had stuff saying, I'm a saint. We walk with this thing. Uh, you know, uh, and one day I remember telling the man, I'm righteous. And, he, and we walk, I'm righteous. And it's like, who dare you say that? The Bible says there's none righteous, no, not one. Who dare you say you're righteous? But the word God, of God says, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. Hallelujah. We spoke that way. And the Baptists didn't understand that. So they call us plenty cut style. I mean, we had style. While the Baptists had their Gwen eh, trying to look holy, we permed our, our ladies, permed their hair. And they have this old mantilla and all those kind of big hat and all those kind of funny looking things. And they, and they think they're holy. And we went, and, and, and as we were plenty called style. We went to church with style. We permed our hair. We gave Jerry curls in those days. And them sour Baptists understand us and they, they play, are, you, are you not right? Are you not this? Are you not that? We understand the word of God. Don't let people define you. The word of God defines you. And he have declared some stuff over you. He called you overcomer. Even when you look wondering how you're going to overcome. He called you that. So if you, with the power of your mouth, give yourself a name, when God has given a name, you'll not change it. If he call you overcome and you just say, uh, you know, well, yeah, you, and let, let's go back to the Baptist. When we call ourselves saints, they, they're trying to be nice. I'm a sinner saved by grace. <laughs> Striving hard to make it to the kingdom. <laughs> Pray for me, my brother, for me to... Seriously? Seriously? I've never read in the Bible, sinner saved by grace. I know I'm a sinner saved by But in terms of a name called to me, Paul wrote to the saints in Philippines. To the saints there. He never said to you, sinners good for nothing, rascals saved by grace. Come and get up. Saint. In fact, touch yourself. Say, I'm saint. Now, if you're, what's your name is? Put your name at the back and say, Saint Michael. Oh, that song's so good. Saint Michael. You know, the Catholics say, St. Michael, pray for me. And when I'm wrong, I say, I'm a saint, let me pray for you. <laughs> Cause you that. So the power to name enables the believer to give permanence to that which he, she names. I have a question for you. What are you giving permanence to with a name? What? What are you giving? What are you branding yourself with by giving it a name? And I'll say this to you. 
I've been asked the question, do not give permanence with a name to something you are just going through. I have, I have seen parents brand their children because they took a little cookie. They brand them a thief. I had a friend who died in prison because he just touched somebody's thing. And they cursed him and say, O vole, who came more alajo. They said to him, You are a thief and you will die in prison. And they cursed the boy. And he was in and out of prison. The last picture of, I, I have of him was during Hurricane David riding a big cat, you know, down Kings Hill Road. He was a daring guy. But he literally died in prison. They gave permanence to him. They put permanence on his life with a name. The curse. No, I'm not, I cannot be cursed. You cannot be cursed. That's why for me, for me, you can raise my mother. I was, she is some minor you know, thing over there. You can curse her. You can tell me all, you know, what they want to say about my mother, my father, and all of that. I ain't bothered with that. But I don't tolerate people trying to curse my destiny. I get very bad. I rebuke them. Adam named the animals. And he named Eve, mother of all, and the power has been given to man. All right? I want you to see something. You know, it's kind of radical. There are seven redemptive names of God. Seven. We say them. Like Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Nisi, you know, these are redemptive names. Redemptive names. They came out of revelation. Five of the seven, seven were given to God by men whilst in the middle of a trying time or coming out of a trying time. They were not given by God to himself. As I'm saying to you, there's the power. You have an anointing to name things and to create permanence with that name. That's they gave permanence with a name to that which they were facing or coming out of by naming God in that thing. I'm just going to put them quickly. We won't go through the scripture, you know, for the sake of time. But number one, Abraham, Jehovah Jireh, you, we understand the promise. The Bible says in Genesis 22, 14, and Abraham called, Abraham called, Abraham called the name of the place the Lord will provide, Jehovah Jireh. It was Abraham who named it. Today, we still, we declare Jehovah Jireh. Permanence to that name. Genesis chapter 48, verse 15. Jacob went blessing Joseph. Jehovah Rea, the Lord is my shepherd. The Bible says, and, and, and he blessed Joseph and said, God, before whom my father, my fathers Abraham and Isaac walk, the God who has fed me all my life, all my life long to this day. He has taken care of me. He has shepherded me. Even when in dark time, he is Jehovah Rea. The Lord is my shepherd. He named it. When he had to run from his brother, God. I'm not sure what you're running from. I'm not sure what you're dealing with. But I tell you this, God will sustain you. God will take care of you. Hallelujah. God is not a father who neglects his own. He will shepherd you. Revelation in that name. We had Moses. Moses. Exodus 17. Verse 15. When they were facing the Amalekite and there was this battle. They raised his hand. And, and, they, and they won against the Amalekite. The Bible says. And Moses built an altar and called its name. The Lord is my banner. Jehovah Nissi. The Lord is my. He gave a name. In, the, in, in faith, you we declare names, we speak things, we activate things. Gideon. Gideon was terror. He was afraid. He was, he was afraid of the, of the Moabites. He was hiding. Hiding. 
And in Judges chapter 6, verse 24 and 24, it says, Then the Lord said to him, Peace be with you. Do not fear. He was afraid. You shall not die. So if you're afraid. <laughs> so Gideon built an altar there to the Lord and called it, The Lord is peace. And it says, To this day, it is still in Ophir. It is still there. The Lord is peace. Jehovah Shalom. And finally, in Ezekiel, chapter 48, the children of Israel, Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is here, present. It says, all the way around shall be 18,000 18, cubits, and the name of the city from that day shall be, the Lord is there. Shammah, he is present all the time. Men did that. They named. So I'm saying to us, I'm saying to us, the power to name enables the believer to give permanence to that which he or she names. It enables you to do that. It enables you to do that. And number four, when things are brought to you, when things are brought to you, give it a name. Based on the revelation from God and His Word. Give it a name. Things come from God to us. Life brings us things. Am I not right? And life circumstances cause things to happen to us. And some things come from the realm of the Spirit. And all kinds of stuff happen. How do you name them? What name are you giving them? Abraham, Moses, Gideon, the children of Israel, all of these guys, Jacob, they faced things. And in their circumstances, they got a revelation from God. And they declare a name. That's why in your sickness you say the Lord is my healer. That's why in your lack you declare the Lord is my provider. Amen. You can cry how poor you are. You can cry oh this and that. Oh my mother had it. My grandmother had it. My grand, 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 great grandmother had it. Oh it's in my family. And if that's the way, if that's the name you gave it, well it will be in your family. And some of you just like it in your family. Hello? Some people just like it in their family. There are some things you should stop liking in your family. Because as a believer, you can break curses. You can stop things. So stop liking things in your family. And let me just say this. The Bible says we are snared, we are trapped by the words of the mouth. And then sometimes your casual little conversation, you just casually say some stuff and the enemy jumps on it and he traps you, inflicts you. Things will come to us through life, I tell you this, as we journey. We'll have times in life. Be careful what, you're, what you name as things come to you in life. Don't just accept some stuff because you may create permanence with a name. The Bible says, out of the ground. Out of the ground, the Lord, and I'm going back to these verses. Out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air. Look at what's in bold. And brought them. He brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. He didn't call them. He took them to Adam. Life is sending some things at you. What are you calling it? When things are brought to you, give it a name based on the revelation from God and his word. He brought them to Adam to see what is coming. Things will come at you. Life will bring things at you. Life will throw things at you. What are you naming them? Verse 22 also says that. Then the reeb which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into a woman. And look at it. And he brought her to the man. 
And when he brought her to the man, the man didn't connect her with a hippo. The man didn't connect her with a zebra. Those fellas that ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of a truth, they say we come from monkey. The man didn't connect her to a monkey or a chimpanzee or an ape. He connected her with himself and he named her. He named her in his circumstances. He named her. And that name became permanent. She shall be called woman. So we saw that in verse 19. We saw that in verse 22. Let me wrap this up finally. There is a name above all names. And please understand, I don't want to be little and I don't want you to feel I'm belittling what you are facing with. Some of you have medical challenges. And it has been given a name. And I'm in no way trying to ridicule that. And I hope you didn't get that. Because here's the point. There is a name above all names. Remember I said everything has a name. We, to function on earth, there has to be a name. So the thing is given a name for a reason. But there is a name that is above that name. There's a name above cancer. There's a name above tumor. There's a name above asthma. There's a name above COVID. There's a name above, uh, above malaria. There's a name above arthritis, rheumatism, sickle cell. There is a name above that name. There is a name above that migraine headache that you're facing. There's a name above that tumor that you might have in your body. There's a name above that name. Name it. We need name to operate on this earth. But the Lord God declared there's a name above that name. The name of Jesus. The Bible tells us, and being formed in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and he became obedient to the point of death even the death of the cross and he says therefore in light of that God has highly exalted him God didn't just barely exalt him God exalted him high and when God exalted him God says look my your, your people you redeemed they are struggling with some stuff some of us just think the name that above our name is just the name of Satan. Oh, his, his name is above Satan. No, his name is above everything that life may throw at you. That everything. He has given him the name which is above every name. Naming is a principle of earth. And names tie us, connect us, binds us. God understand that. God didn't say he just gave him a position. He could have said he gave him a position above everybody else. He could have said that. But name, we understand names. Each of us here have a name. And some of you have a name that is not your name. And some of you went to people, someone and they give you a name that is still not your name. But these things define you. Define you. You have, there's a name above every name. And it says that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, shall bow, should bow. Disease have a name, they will bow. Sickness have a name, they will bow. They will bow to the name of Jesus. Hear me today. If your situation has a name, you give it. Or an established name from the names that are given to everything around, it must bow to the name of Jesus. If the name is a disease, if the name is a malady, if the name is a sickness, it has to bow to the name of Jesus. If the name is a habit, it's a behavior, it's a curse, it has to bow to the name of Jesus. If the name is a condition, a state that is mysterious to you, it still has to bow to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. When the angel of God appeared to Joseph in a dream, 
He came with a very specific message about the meaning of the name. He didn't just come and say, your name will be called Jesus. He didn't say that. That's why hell respect the name. That's why when the seven sons of Kiva went to this guy and they say, in the name of Jesus, that Paul preached. They were like, who are you guys? We know the name, we know Jesus, we know Paul, but who are you guys? They understand and recognize the name. The name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he shall be, and he shall bring forth, and she, sorry, shall bring forth a son. And thou shalt call his name Yeshua. Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Now some of you, that's all you accept about it. But the name Jesus or Yeshua in the Hebrew was the same word as salvation. Let me, let me just point it out as, you know, as we tie this thing down. The five redemptive names that these men named God. When you look at all five, they are tied up within salvation. Every one of them has something to do with salvation. But they got the revelation on earth. Provision, peace, healing, protection. You, you understand? And, and his presence. He is present. God is not taking vacation. God is not seeing you in stuff and he's saying, boy, let me escape myself. He is there. That's why the Bible says, listen to what the Bible says. Don't get it. Listen, listen. The Bible says he is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. But, but, but listen, listen to that further. He, it says he is a very present help in times of need. Let me ask you a question. How close is your need to you? How close is your need to you? Let me ask you another question. How close is your pain to you? Huh? He is a very present help in time of trouble. Let me tell you, he is closer to you than your pain. The name of Jesus, Yeshua in the Hebrew was the same word as salvation. God chose a name that directly described the life purpose of his son. Call his name Jesus, salvation, for he will save, he will deliver his people from their sin. Embrace that. When we embrace Jesus, it works. Let me close. Let me close. Since names are established, it brings a choice between life and death. It's established. It's established. Names are established. Brings a choice. You have a choice. You can say the name that God has given, or you can say the other name that brings you death. Please understand, brothers and sisters, God is never moved by pity. He is moved by faith. And finally, for everything that comes at us or against us, we use one name. One name. Jesus. Jesus. There are people I've heard of that have been facing an accident. And they call on the name of Jesus. And they escaped it. I don't share this testimony a lot. But I remember one time when I started to work with Paramount Printers and Chronicle. I, I was the driver. And I drove a little bus. And I was coming through Concord with that bus. And I used to run the bus. I used to drive fast. And I was coming on that bridge in Concord. You know that bridge? Then you come, it's come a corner. It's almost like you just meet the bridge. And I met the bridge. And on that bridge, I was meeting another vehicle on the bridge. I called on the Lord's name. And I don't know how he stretched the bridge. But we both passed. We both passed on the vehicle. On the bridge. The bridge couldn't at the time take the two vehicles. But I passed. Yes, 
I'm saying to you, for everything that comes at you, at us, against us, you can use that name. That one name. Everything within, remember I, I spoke about names within our domain? Everything within our domain, be it in the sea, be it on land, be it in the air, respects that one name. Never be afraid to use that name. In the, uh, in, are you understanding that? Sickness, we are healed of because of that name. We are delivered because of that name. Hallelujah. Things happen because of that name. Hell respects that name. Because the enemy understands what he got as a result of that name. Can you stand with me please? Every one of you.